projectiles, pickup animations and UI improvements. That's some of the added features in this update. Let's check them out. Hello everyone and welcome back. The last two weeks I've been working on a number of different features, such as projectiles, UI improvements, animation for picking up items and more. But before any of that, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. It helps out the channel a lot and I would be grateful if you did. Thanks. All right, let's begin this update with the projectiles. I started with making a class that stores everything about them. Position, speed, size, bounds, what type of targets and what type of projectile it is. Instead of having one class for each type of projectile, I just have one for all. And depending on which type of projectile, it renders a different image and it also checks for different targets. And all my projectiles is stored in the same array to make it easier. For example, the object in the corner shoots out a fireball and that fireball checks for player and collisions with walls and other objects. It ignores the enemies. But if the player shoots, that one starts checking for enemies instead, but it still checks for walls and such. While working on the player projectiles, I run into some bugs. Here the shooting direction is quite off and it will be hard to hit the enemies if you only can shoot upwards. But it looked funny though. It should go left to right obviously, like this. Next up was to make the bullet in GIMP to replace the fireball image for bullets. I also made sure that after it was fired it could detect the enemy and kill them. And last of this feature was to change the size, starting position and also the speed of the bullet. This now completes the projectile work for now. Currently, when a new projectile is added, a new one is created each time. This needs to change so that the inactive projectiles are reused instead. This will save on memory in the long run, but it's not really a priority right now. That's for later. And for the player to shoot, he needs a gun. Right now we have a gun to begin with, but I will add a way for the player to find it, or pick it up, or loot it somehow. I don't think I will keep it like this, where he are given the gun at the start. I also added a button for the switching between the weapons, so when you click it, a cool animation shows the player tossing up the current weapon into the air and a new one comes down. This is still not set in stone and I might change it later, but uh, the animation was part of the player model pack and it looks nice I think. But I don't know if it, that will be annoying every time you wish to switch weapon you have to toss it up into the air. This can only, I can only figure this out later down the road when I'm closer to the final product of the game. Next up is the improvements to the user interface, but before that, I need something to drink. <sighs> Alright, let's continue. Before I changed anything, it had a very basic look and it was just a placeholder. It was greyish, boring and quite ugly. It also lacked the feedback to the player when you pressed any button. So now with the improved look, I also changed the color when you click on it. It gives the player some feedback that the button was pressed. It is a nice addition to the user interface, since it's a screen button and not an actual button. I have also been working on animations for picking up an item. Before it would just disappear and show up at the left corner, and it gave the player no visual feedback really. So I changed this so it makes it fly through the air when you touch it. And the effect was done by, as soon as the player touches the item, it travels towards its spot at the side, and once it's there, a copy of that image of that item grows in size quickly and also increases the transparency of that image. And that is pretty much how the effect is done. I also tried to use the same effect for doing the hearts to begin with, but it didn't really make sense. When you pick up a heart, you kind of want to see the health increase right away. So I didn't use the flying part of the keys effect. I, I simply used the grow in size instead. And I think this looks really nice. Lastly, I added a taking damage effect on the player model, so whenever the player takes damage now, that is from a projectile or an enemy etc, it makes the model of the player flash white. During this time, player cannot take any more damage from those types of sources until after the duration is over. He of course can die from spikes or anything else that usually one-shots him. This was done by simply adding a color to the shaded program and replace the texture coordinates for the model with a static color during this duration. Next update will be about adding more enemies and beginning the process of adding puzzles to the game. There will most likely be more features than that, but this is what I have come up with right now. That is pretty much it for this update. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you like the content. It really helps out the channel a lot and I would very much appreciate it if you did.
Until then, have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.